All right, so I've been putting this off for a while now just because of my laziness, but I'm finally gonna take this drum apart and give it the TLC that it deserves. One other thing is that I found some other little issues with it after I made that original video, so I'll address that once I take it apart. Just to show you how much I actually hate rope on a snare, That's what I hate about flatheads, they always slip out and then in this case it, you know, hit the drum which easily could have scratched it but I'm okay this time. And sure enough the fasteners that are holding the lugs in are flatheads so forget all that, I'm not taking all those out with a screwdriver. Uh, conveniently though, the bolt head is the same size as all the other hardware so good job Ludwig. Alright, so I've said this before and I'll say it again, but whenever you take a drum apart, you really want to stay organized and keep all the separate pieces together in a separate container because that way you don't have a giant mess of parts. And by doing this, there's less of a chance of losing something and also you just stay organized and you don't have a giant pile of crap that you gotta dig through. The cameraman forgot to turn the mic on. Good job. But you can clearly see that I'm taking the lugs apart, so I'm taking the springs out with these needle nose pliers and then the tension nuts or the swivel nuts slip right out and then there's a piece of foam that dampens the spring so I'm taking that out too and I will replace it. Alright, now the fun part of cleaning. This shell is painted or powder coated so I'm not going to use an abrasive cleaner like Brasso or anything but if this was like a steel, or not a steel, a chrome plated shell then I would use Brasso. I actually have a video about doing that so if you want to see that, check it out. But since this is painted or powder coated, I'm not going to use it. So instead, I'll just start with soapy water and see how that does. And if that doesn't work, then I'll step it up a bit. But you can see where the lugs were, how, uh, you know, how gray it is and how clean it is under the lugs. But the shell, where it was exposed to all the sun and the air, if this stupid thing will focus, you can see how it looks now. So it's kind of cloudy, not the cleanest. So that's not working, so I'll try some Windex. So it turns out I don't have any Windex, so I'll try this uh, bathroom cleaner. Still nothing. Well, the cameraman screwed up again, but I will not be using the original internal muffler, throw off, butt plate, or the tension rod washers. All those parts I got replacements for. The lug washers and the fasteners are completely fine. They don't need to be cleaned at all, so I'm not going to touch them. But the tension rods are a little bit dirty, so I'll give those a quick little scrub. And all I'm doing is using a drum key to twist the tension rod around this rag, which is uh, damp with that, uh, that bathroom cleaner. So if you have a drum key drill bit, that'll be a perfect use for this because it'll go a lot faster. But if you don't have one, then just use a drum key. Now that takes us to the lugs. They're actually pretty clean, at least on the inside, so the springs are completely fine. I do not need to clean those at all. There's no rust or anything. The outsides of the lugs need to be polished a little bit, which I'll get to in a second. But before I do that, I'm going to clean the swivel nuts because the insides of the threads are a little bit, you know, dirty and, you know, just greasy. So I want to clean out that grease and any grit that's in there before I apply new grease and put it back together. And to make this process a whole lot easier and to make it go by a whole lot faster, I'm just taking a Q-tip, putting it in the drill, and going to town. Thank you. 
And now for the actual lugs. There's a million ways to clean a lug and to polish one, but the fastest way I've found is just to use a buffing wheel with a really light polishing compound. So I'll hit the lug on the wheel real quick and that shines them right up. The one thing that is messed up with this drum that I was talking about in the beginning of the video is that there is a dent right over where the throw off is mounted. To remove this dent I just put the shell on my workbench like so, but also you'll see that the bead molding along the shell of the drum is hanging off the side of the workbench so that way when I beat the dent out I won't create another dent. Alright, so now this throw-off. I bought it because it said it was a P85 style throw-off, but what I thought it meant by that was the holes would line up the bolt holes, but they don't. But I was stupid, and on the website it had the, uh, the bolt hole pattern, as in the measurements between the bolts. But I just looked at it and assumed it was the same as the shell, or the original, but uh... It's not, so I kind of messed up with that. And really the only similarity this has with the P85 is that it throws off to the side. Uh, I guess it has the kind of Ludwig uh, Art Deco look to it, so I guess that's why it said that. But either way, I messed up. I easily could have just not bought this one, but I did, so now I'm going to make it work.
if you were wondering, I am going to leave this bracket how it is. I'm not going to clean it up. There's pink paint on the back. There's Sharpie marks on it. There's scratches on it. There's pencil marks. I'm just going to leave it how it is just because I, don't know, I think it looks kind of cool. It has this like, you know, Mad Max sort of rat rod sort of feel. So I'm just going to leave it how it is. And also, if I, you know, sell this drum and you happen to buy it, then, you know, it was mine. There it is, all completed. Obviously, I put the heads back on. The batter side head is the same as before. It's just a Remo Ambassador coated. And the snare side head is just a Remo Ambassador snare side. I also put new tension rod washers on. These are from that Groove Percussion Kit that I got off Craigslist. So I figured I'd use these instead of those black ones that I said I was going to use in the last video. And those black ones will go on this other snare that I'm building in the near future. I also put on new snares because the old ones were just old and you might remember that I clipped one of the wires because it was all bent up so I figured I'll just buy new snares and of course I switched out the string with the strap. So was all this worth it? Not really. I mean it's nice to have the new thumb screw for the internal muffler. It's also nice to have a newer throw off that's not all bent up. It's also nice to have the dent taken out and it's nice to have new snares and new straps but really you know, besides that, all the cleaning and stuff, it wasn't really worth it. This shell and this whole drum really wasn't in that bad a shape. So what I just did, I wouldn't say it was a waste of time, but it wasn't really worth it. But I guess all that's left is to play it. <laughs> 